You're going to get an exclusive here. Yes. I got called by these folks saying they wanted to do a documentary on Nickelodeon. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're looking at individuals and controversies connected to Quiet on Set that weren't explored in depth or were omitted entirely from the documentary. We went back and began to try to do some sort of uh, reporting to try to determine how widespread this problem is. Brian Peck's close ties to Brian Singer. Peck was well connected in Hollywood. One of his most prominent associates being Brian Singer, who has also been accused of inappropriate behavior with minors. Brian Peck didn't just have a cameo in Singer's first X-Men film. The two recorded the commentary for the movie's home media release. My buddy Gary Goddard was the guy walking alongside in the flannel shirt. And the guy eating hot dogs is you. The fat my... guy in the Hawaiian shirt eating hot dogs? Hey, that's me. Thank you for, I'm on screen so long, thank you. You are, it's, it's in fact, you are so imposing in the screen, people don't even see Stan Lee. Peck also popped up as a news reporter in Singer's X2. Look, I just think all this anti-mutant protesting underscores a genuine growing concern among most Americans. But the X-Men connections don't end there. Quiet On Set mentions that Cyclops actor James Marsden wrote Peck a letter of support. Listen to me. Don't do this. What it does not tell you is that Peck was Marsden's best man in 2000, according to another letter that X-Men executive producer Thomas DeSanto regretted writing. Yet it's Peck's ties to Singer that paint a disturbing parallel, and we're not just talking about their names. A number of people I spoke to who put money in completely denied that anything untoward was going on there. And it was as though they were from the industrial home for the blind. Drake Bell forgave Ryder Strong. In the fifth episode, Drake Bell discussed a few celebrities who wrote character letters for Brian Peck, including Boy Meets World stars Ryder Strong and Will Friedle. While Strong and Friedle publicly expressed regret, Bell mentioned that nobody had reached out to him directly to apologize. No one else? I mean, no one at all? Personally? Personally, no. Not one person who's written one of those letters has reached out to me. There were a few developments between this interview and the episode's airing. Namely, Strong did get in touch with Bell. On April 5th, two days before episode five aired, Bell posted on social media, quote, I just had the most amazing conversation with Ryder Strong. We are all healing together. I have nothing but love and forgiveness for him. Only time will tell if Friedel will connect with Bell as well. But in any case, this conversation is far from over. So I, I guess I gotta figure stuff out too, but for me, for you. The media's response to Jamie Lynn Spears' pregnancy. While Jamie Lynn Spears is referenced several times, Quiet On Set doesn't delve deep into her pregnancy or more significantly, how the media reacted. Contrary to rumors, Zoe 101 wasn't canceled due to Spears' pregnancy. Zoe, something's bothering you. Yeah. If you figure out what it is, let me know. The series wrapped shooting before the news broke, although episodes were still airing. Even so, the media framed the story as Nickelodeon star pregnant at 16. Spears recalls people calling her, quote, the worst human alive, and that she, quote, ruined Zoe 101 for young girls. Meanwhile, nobody was talking about the working environment Spears was raised in or the sexual content that adult writers worked into her show. While Spears' choices were her own, it was irresponsible for the media to shame her while ignoring the red flags at Nickelodeon. Of course, I don't want to be, you know, hounded by the paparazzi or the tabloids or allow them to control my narratives, but it felt like I was really being alienated. Nickelodeon's non-disclosure agreements. It was very difficult to get people to, to speak, but, you know, we reached out to many, many people, and I think those that participated felt that, you know, they had been holding a lot of, um, a lot of secrets. According to iCarly star Jeanette McCurdy, Nickelodeon offered her $300,000 to sign an NDA, which would have prevented her from discussing her time at the network or Dan Schneider's behavior. McCurdy rejected the offer, allowing her to tell all in her memoir. I think I did something that was really hard to do. Oh my God, it makes me emotional. I'm proud of myself. While many former Nickelodeon stars have since called out the network's management, others have been vague or unresponsive about the scandals quiet on set spotlighted. There could be various reasons for this, although it's safe to say McCurdy wasn't the only one presented with an NDA. Just because McCurdy said no doesn't mean everyone else did. 
Alexa Nicholas of Zoe 101 has advocated for Nickelodeon to release employees from their NDAs. No more silencing in there. We want to know what's happening in there so we can actually help if needed. Yeah. We can't participate in any type of help if we don't know what's going on in there. And all these corporations keep silencing people with NDAs and it's like enough is enough. With this unlikely to happen, we may never get the full story. Dan Schneider pressured Jeanette McCurdy to drink. There was a very abusive producer on that show and that that would not have gone well if I tried to communicate that to him. While Quiet On Set touches upon some of the allegations McCurdy brought against Schneider, it leaves out one of the most disturbing accounts from I'm Glad My Mom Died. McCurdy, recalled the creator, a thinly veiled Schneider, pushed her to drink an alcoholic beverage. But she can't say, I didn't like that, or she can't not have a sense of humor about it, and she can't not play with it because she has to. Despite McCurdy's protests that she was three years away from being able to drink legally, the creator responded, quote, No one's looking, janitor. You're fine. McCurdy continued to object, but the creator argued that the victorious kids got drunk together, and they needed to give the, quote, wholesome iCarly kids, quote, a little edge. <laughs> Hollywood, man. <laughs> McCurdy only took a sip, although she'd struggled with substance use in the years that followed. Whether or not this was a turning point, the creator's actions were beyond unacceptable. Angelique Bates' experiences on all that. I was physically, mentally, emotionally abused in front of the producers and cast members, and sometimes they could even hear me yelling. Although she was among the first big names to speak out against Nickelodeon, Angelique Bates is only mentioned briefly during the documentary's fifth episode. It was previously reported that Nickelodeon producers stood by while Bates' mother mistreated her on set. Bates has since clarified that her mother never verbally and emotionally abused her, but she claims Nickelodeon did. From 1992 to 1996, I was a series regular on Nickelodeon's All That. I was only 12 years old, and that's when my nightmare began. While rehearsing an All That scene, Bates recalled two other cast members throwing and spitting milk at her, which wasn't scripted. When Bates threw milk back, Dan Schneider screamed obscenities at her, despite laughing when others doused her with milk. The microphones were on, allowing anyone near an intercom or television to hear Schneider's tirade. There was many times where I had to go, okay, you're creating an atmosphere on this set that is not healthy. Schneider apologized after the guest director intervened, but faced no serious repercussions. Mark Summers walking out of his interview. Double Dare host Mark Summers agreed to be interviewed for Quiet On Set, although he only appears for a few seconds. Summers felt, quote, ambushed when the crew showed him a clip he couldn't believe was on Nickelodeon. And I said, well, let's stop tape right here. What are we doing? Well, we're doing this thing. Do you know this guy? And all this kind of stuff. And I left. Realizing this wasn't what he signed up for, Summers asked the crew to stop taping and left. Led to believe that only his positive comments about Nickelodeon would be included, Summers was surprised to find the, quote, bait and switch featured. They put in that other thing where they had the camera on me when they ambushed me. And, um, no way! Yeah. So um, now we get into a whole situation about um, who's unethical. Directors Mary Robertson and Emma Schwartz insist they were, quote, clear with each participant about the nature of their projects. Either way, Summers had little to say about Dan Schneider, having never worked with or even met him since Double Dare ended before all that. Those people came in after and took over our studios. Never met the man, have no idea about any of those things. I mean, I know Keenan uh, from Keenan and Kel because we've done stuff together, but um, as far as anything that happened on that show with any of those people, I, I never met any of them. Drake Bell's accusers. Quiet On Set doesn't ignore Drake Bell's legal troubles, acknowledging that he pled guilty to attempted endangering children and a misdemeanor charge regarding problematic text messages he exchanged with a teenage girl. Taking responsibility for these mistakes, Bell received two years probation and 200 hours of community service. The documentary also notes that he wasn't charged for physical violence. However, the filmmakers tiptoe around the fact that the underage victim did accuse Bell of assault, calling him a, quote, monster. I idolized and looked up to him, and he took that and broke it in the most sickening way possible. He is the epitome of evil. His ex-girlfriend, Melissa Lingefeld, also accused Bell of verbal and physical abuse. Bell has denied these claims, and many have backed him up. Since Quiet On Set is about child endangerment, though, it is worth examining this story from every angle. I uh, made a lot of decisions in my life that I shouldn't have made, and uh, hurt a lot of people and 
Where are Brian Peck and Jason Handy now? Three or four months prior to his arrest was the Jason Handy case. And then Brian gets arrested and nothing. no articles. I mean, there's nothing about it. After inexplicably getting a job on Zach and Cody following his served time, Peck still found a few more high-profile gigs. He appeared as Bugsy Hero in the 2008 Adam Sandler comedy Bedtime Stories and a TMZ announcer in Charlie Sheen's Anger Management, going uncredited both times. Peck's last credit was as Zombie Dad in 2015's Freaks of Nature, although he still lives in Los Angeles as a free man. That boggles my mind. After being sentenced in 2004, Jason Handy was released from prison in 2009. Handy's freedom was short-lived, as the registered sex offender was arrested again five years later for his old habits. As of writing, Handy is serving his sentence at Petersburg's Federal Correctional Institution, with his release set for August 28, 2038. You admitted it, and it's really not okay. You're a criminal, in honestly one of the worst ways possible. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Not the first documentary to call out Brian Peck. Ten years before Quiet On Set premiered, Brian Peck's crimes came up in An Open Secret, another documentary about the dark side of child stardom. Although Peck is among the predators discussed, it's noted that his accuser remained anonymous. A kid that wants to speak out and say what happened to them beyond their family would truly have to give up their career. Um, it's very sad that that's the case, but it's a reality. Chances are you never heard of this documentary, as no U.S. distributor would touch it, not even for an on-demand release. You could argue this is because the subject matter was just too depressing, but the more likely explanation is that the industry has been suppressing the truth for decades. 12 years ago, the article got killed. Here we are 12 years later, we get one screening, maybe we'll get distribution. It's not very likely, but we really do hope that someone will put this out. It's hard to imagine a documentary like Quiet On Set getting greenlit before Me Too took off. Now that Quiet On Set has gotten the word out, an open secret deserves an official release next. I'm not going to hide this in my head the rest of my life. And I'm going to maybe possibly one day make a difference to somebody else by speaking out about it. Is there anything else you think that Quiet On Set left out? Let us know in the comments. My hope is that with every voice that comes out, something changes. Maybe today's the day.